Hi everyone, Nick again to talk to you about information systems and in this particular podcast, overview and information services. Now, the reason I'm here in my office is because I want to show you what a pre-digital information service looked like. It's a library. And as we're going to see as we talk through some of these areas, the way that we can store things now is actually much better than the way we used to be able to. Maybe there's not as much satisfaction in using paper, but we can actually store a lot more and we can access it a lot more easily. So let's get started. We've already talked about hardware and it's many different forms how we can combine it with software to achieve a very great deal. But by itself, we've got one system. When we start to bring systems together, what we can do is we can start to pull the data in each of those systems. And by bringing all of that data together and making it easy to find things in there, we end up with a much more powerful overall system than if we had just one piece of hardware with some software running on top. And this brings us to the area of information systems. An information system is a grouping together of hardware and software over multiple machines and potentially over multiple countries spanning the globe to collect, filter, process, create, and distribute data. And it's this data focus that really defines what an information system is. We're looking to bring in a lot of information. We're looking to make it available to people, but only the things that they need. And if we can, we're going to try and create new and interesting sets of data out of something we've already collected, then we make it available back to people. So here you are running some hardware. We won't show the software for this one. You're doing things that matter to you. You're collecting data for yourself. Somebody else is doing the same thing. And there's a third person who's doing very much their own thing. But when we bring all that information together, when we share it across a network of some sort, and more importantly, when we make it available to you in a format that you care about, what we then start to see is an information system, and in particular, an information service. Information systems have a data focus. Information services focus on collecting that data, either from a source that already exists, or from people who are using the system, organizing that data into a way that makes it easier to access and faster to access, and then making it available to everybody. Let's look at what this looks like. Much like every information service we've ever had in the history of humankind, at the core, you've got to have all of this data, all this information stored somewhere. Of course, in a library, as I showed you over my shoulder, you store it in books. In an information system, we store things in databases. And you don't really need to know the details of this, just that a database is a storage site for data. And normally, there's an awful lot of data to be stored. We said that information services collect data. Well, where do they get it from? The first approach we can take is we can take pre-existing data that existed before the digital system and we can enter that through normally human effort of some sort and put that into the databases manually. So it's pre-existing data taken in through a horde of uh, terminals of some sort and it goes into the databases. Sometimes by itself and often in conjunction with the previous approach, the user activity within the information service itself can actually be part of what we collect. So when you're using Facebook, for example, the things that you do in there go on to form part of the data that's in the system. People put in their own information, you respond to that, you become part of the data set. So user activity itself is often a very common source of collection for a database. Now that we've got all this data, well, what are we going to do with it? Well, there's no point putting data into a system unless you actually want to pull it out again. And that means it has to be organized in a way that you can find it easily. Think of it like socks. If you've got an odd sock and you know that the other one's in the drawer somewhere, it's much easier to find because you've organized things so that some things are in the drawer, some things are in the washing pile, some things are actually in the laundry basket waiting to go back into the drawer. If, let's say for example, you have socks everywhere throughout your house, the searching process takes longer. So in very much the same way, the organization of the data that we keep inside our information services is going to make a big difference as to how easy it is to find that information again. And as you would have found looking for things on the internet yourself, good organization gives you a good experience. So organization is really important. Why? Because databases get big really, really quickly. And imagine trying to find your sock somewhere on the planet and you get an idea of the kind of organizational problem we're dealing with in large information services. Some of the things we do in organization include sorting the data because it's easier to find things when they are in the order that we expect. 
We also sometimes arrange data so that it's in a place that's more convenient for us to get to. Now, this sometimes means that we move things so that they're closer. And on a network-based environment, this makes sense because the distance that you have to travel to get stuff is going to take you longer. The other thing that we do sometimes is duplicate information so that instead of having to wait for it to come across the network, we have a copy of it locally. But the thing that we're going to talk about later on is actually going to be sorting in some detail. In terms of an information service making things available, well, first of all, we're going to need network access. It's one of the most interesting things about the way that we store information now. If the network went down, a lot of what we take for granted would disappear completely. And this is actually a worry to some people who look at the long-term survivability of information in the networked world. So we worry about things like reliability. If one part of the network goes down, can we still get access to the data? And underneath most of the information services that you use is a large amount of work going on to make these systems reliable, even when the network isn't working perfectly across the world. And finally, we have aspects of accessibility. Have we actually set up these services so that everybody can use them? Have we dealt with things like disabled access? Have we dealt with the fact that some people can't read? What have we done to make these information services available to as many people as possible? So putting it all together, an information system is focused on data. An information service allows you to collect, organize, and give that data back to people in a way that's useful for them. But the world's best information service is going to be pretty useless to you if you have a network dropout. And this is one thing we always have to remember. As we join things together with networks, we become very vulnerable to those networks going away. Well, that's the overview of information systems and an introduction to information services. Still to come in this particular module, we're going to talk about searching, we're going to talk about social protocols, and we're also going to briefly touch on encryption. Thank you.